the statement of faith is, I am a Christian. That is one who relies entirely on Jesus Christ for salvation and eternal life. Jesus is the object of my faith. Jesus Christ is the eternal God, the only savior and the sole source of eternal life. Jesus is the eternal God manifest in the flesh as the son of God. When Jesus died on the cross, he paid for the sins of the whole world. When Jesus rose from the dead, he proved he has power over life and death. Jesus offers salvation and eternal life as a free gift to everyone. We receive the gift of eternal life through faith alone in Christ alone. No works are required to get saved, stay saved, or prove one's salvation. Our salvation is eternally secure. We cannot lose it for any reason. Once we have believed, our salvation is irrevocable by God or by us. Now, that's a lot of claims in that statement of faith. Uh, is there anything in the Bible to support these claims? Well, I'm gonna read just a few scriptures, but first let me start off with what I learned about let's say in about, uh, I'd say April of, of uh, 1987, I took a course called Evangelism Explosion. And it, it, it said, you begin with diagnostic questions. We need to diagnose. So anybody listening now, I'd like you to answer these two questions. And uh, by your answer, I can diagnose you or I can determine if you are a safe person or not if you're going to go to heaven or not. So the question is, are you certain that you're going to go to heaven and have eternal life? Are you certain? And if you are certain, why? Based on what? So just answer that question in your own mind, and then we'll come back to your answer in a minute. Uh, so here are the scriptures that I want to use to, to support the claims made in the statement of faith. And uh, salvation is not earned through personal merit, but is a free gift from Jesus. Let's look at Romans uh, 10, 3. It says, for they don't understand that Christ has died for to make them right with God. Instead, they're trying to make themselves good enough to gain God's favor by keeping the laws and customs. But that's not God's way of salvation. Uh, so does that apply to you? That's, that is the question. When, when you said, uh, uh, well, I, I think I'm going to go to heaven. I'm not certain maybe, but, but uh, the reason is because I'm a pretty good person. If you think that you're going to go to heaven based upon your own merit, you're good enough that God will accept you. Then that verse Romans 10, three is talking about you. You're trying to establish your own righteousness to present to God, but that's not God's way. God's way is you must receive the righteousness of Jesus Christ and rely on that as your righteousness. Also, Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9 says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Now, these verses here are really so clear and explicit that they will require no amplification, no uh, uh, expounding on my part. It's simple enough a child should understand what that says. The next point is everyone has sinned and everyone needs Jesus. We look at Romans 3.23. It says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All means every person without exception. And Romans 6.23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we've all sinned, no exceptions. The wages or the result, what we get because of our sin is death. In this case, we're talking about the second death also. You die physically and then you get judged by God and you die the second death, the eternal death in the lake of fire. But the Bible says that you'll have eternal life as a gift from Jesus. 
if if you choose if you if you believe then you receive it now jesus is the only savior we look at john 129 it says behold the lamb of god it's talking about jesus which taketh away the sin of the world so jesus is called the lamb of god he was sacrificed to pay for the sins of the whole world and in mark 10 45 it says, uh, Jesus came to give his life as a ransom for many. A ransom is a payment made to set someone free. John 3, 16, everybody knows that verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's talking about Jesus. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So these are the two outcomes. You will either perish or you will have everlasting life. And John 14, 6 says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. This is an outlandish claim by Jesus. Jesus says, I am the way, the way, the truth, the life. Oh, he, he, he finishes by saying, on, a, on, on top of that, I'm the only way. I'm not only the way, I'm the one and only way. No other way except me. If you want to get to heaven, Jesus is the only way. You need to have Jesus for your salvation, for your, as your Savior. And Jesus paid for all our sins on the cross and was raised from the dead. We look at 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3. It says, for I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. So Jesus died on that cross to pay for your sins. He rose from the dead to prove his claims are true. He is God. He is Savior. He does have power over life and death. And what do you have to do? Simply believe on Jesus and eternal life in heaven is promised and guaranteed to you. Look at John 11, verses 25 and 26. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Acts 16, 30, 31 says, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. John 10, 28 says, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Romans 8, verse 38 says, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So now you know the, the claims uh, of, of our faith, the, on a statement of faith. And now you know the scriptures that support those claims. Now, do you believe it? I don't, I don't know, only you can answer that question. Do you believe it or not? If you believe it, then you have it. You have eternal life if you believe it. Uh, I was speaking to my wife this morning. I don't know why, but for some reason, the word ascertain came to my mind. I was thinking about that word, and I asked my wife, I said, well, how would you define ascertain? And she gave me a good answer, but I looked, wanted to look it up be sure, to be sure. So I looked it up, and it says it's a verb. It means find something out for certain to make sure of. Um, but something else I observed about the word. As certain. Ascertain. If you break it in part, it says as certain. You know something as certain, and that's what you need to do. You need to ascertain. You need to know for certain that these scriptures I just read to you are true. And when you 
believe it with that confidence, then you have eternal life promised and guaranteed to you. All right, that's the good news. It's called the gospel because that's a Greek word that just means good news, but that's an understatement. It's the greatest news I've ever heard. And if you understand it, you should be jumping for joy right now. <laughs> should be the happiest moment of your life if this, if this finally became clear to you when you believe it.